right, I think we're ready to get started. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time speaking at WordCamp. I've also had way too much coffee, <laughs> so I really hope that you guys are awake. Um, I, I will try to be as bearable as I can, and um, hopefully you've had an adequate amount of coffee, so this isn't, I'll speak slowly. Um, so a little about me, Twitter handle. Um, I'm a digital marketer. My background is um, mostly in in-house uh, teams at B2B agencies, but that said, I used to be a freelancer, so I've worked with people in entertainment, um, media, retail, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but right now, I'm with Oomph, and we're a full-service digital design and engineering firm. Um, we work mostly on open source, so a lot of WordPress and Drupal, and um, we have a lot of enterprise-level clients, big projects, so. Some of our clients, um, NBC Universal, Blue Cross Blue Shield. We just did a plug-in for getting images. Definitely stop by the booth um, that we have outside. We're a platinum sponsor, and we're sponsoring the after party, which will be awesome. And the first hour is open bar, so open wine and beer bar. All right, so a little about you. Um, show of hands, just so I kind of have an idea. Who's a developer or a coming at this from a, I'm a tech person that wants to learn more about marketing? Okay, and then who's like, I'm a creative person that knows about marketing that wants to learn more about how to do it in tech? Okay, so pretty good split. All right, so um, I'm hoping that no matter your size, whether or not you're, you know, you're, whether you're a freelancer um, or working at a big agency or working with a team or working by yourself or trying to market something you do or other people do, um, that this will be applicable to you and that at the end of the day you have some good tips moving forward. Um, all of it's awesome, we can definitely work from anywhere. Sorry for the, <laughs> we had a snafu with um, Google presentation, so I think that's the only problem. Um, so I think what brings us all together here today is kind of that feeling of confusion where I know when I first started marketing tech services that I, which I'd never done before, I was like, ah, <laughs> I don't know what Python is, <laughs> what am I, you know, um, I feel like it's, it was harder for me to relate to people in tech and it was harder um, to know how to best sell to those people or, or speak their language. Um, at the same time, I know a lot of the guys I work with are like, I don't want to be an extrovert, <laughs> I don't want to go like sell myself, what does that even mean? Um, so if you've ever felt like you're on kind of this one side of a professional ravine, um, then this talk is for you. So some of my goals for today um, are just to give you a better understanding of basic marketing if you are coming at this from a tech perspective and don't really know where to start. Um, I think especially if you're a freelancer, it's a really good skill set to have um, because a lot of your competitors don't try to do that kind of thing. Like they're not even, you know, you're on like a site like Elance or, um, you know, maybe you have your own website, hopefully you do. Um, and, you know, you're not really contributing a whole lot to it other than what you do. Whereas if you use some of these tips, it'll kind of bring you to that next level. Um, and like I said, hopefully some of those tips, you know, that at the end of each kind of point, I'm going to bring out some things you can start doing today that'll really uh, work off of what you know we've talked about and hopefully some of those things will help you bridge that gap between the technical and the more creative marketing side um, and definitely I'm happy to discuss anything further uh, after the talk we'll have a question period and I'm gonna be at the genius or the happiness bar <laughs> apparently I learned that today and I was like I don't think that they want me there but, um, anyway so if you have any marketing questions also I'll be at the booth all day so all right, so with that, I think we have a lot to get through. Let's dig in. I hate marketers. <laughs> I hate what I do sometimes, and I hate the people that I do it with sometimes. I hate myself sometimes. No, um, you know, when you think about it, like, we, there's like this beautiful little infant creation of a thing born, and then marketers are brought in to just like suck the life out of it and just make it like appeal to everyone and just dumb it down and make it like, awful. So I understand if you're coming into this being like, uh, I don't, I don't want to do this, but I feel like I have to. I think 
Gary Vaynerchuk said it best. I actually saw him speak a couple years ago at uh, the HubSpot conference. <coughs> and he was like, we ruin everything. And that's true. Um, because like I said, you have this really cool new technology, you have this really cool new product, and um, everyone's really excited and optimistic about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then all of a sudden you're seeing it everywhere. You are getting invited to like it, on, like it on Facebook, and you're seeing it on subway ads, and you're seeing it on the TV commercials that you like don't even care about, and so it's like this constant bombarding um, of messages. And um, you know, that's the reality, that's not just you. Everyone is sick of hearing, oh my god, download this now, try this, buy me, fill out this form and you can get this. 20 years ago, people were, you know, cold calling and putting up flyers and putting up, I mean, people still put up billboards, but billboards were a big thing because that's how we communicated. Now we have the internet, social media, we're downloading things, we're using content marketing. And so even in those like new frontiers, people are getting sick of hearing all these messages. So in a world where everyone is being talked to, talked at all the time, how do you reach these people? And that's five secrets of tech marketing, what they're for. I, in the, in the um, schedule, I know it says the five secrets of tech marketing. I took that out and I wanted them to take it out. It didn't get the change in time because this is not, I'm not claiming to have like all the answers and this is like the five things you need to know. Um, this is just kind of like five overarching philosophical principles that you can start working with and that are really going to set you apart from the people that are just like, rrr, rrr, rrr. so here we go. Number one, sit with the developers. So if you're coming at this from a marketing perspective, meaning just literally move your desk and sit with the developers, um, or you know, find developers to sit with if you're on your own. Um, I actually have a fun story about this at the risk of making myself look like an idiot. So this was a blog post that was that we were writing a while back. One of our developers wrote it and gave it to me, which I, always makes me really happy because then I don't have to uh, try to figure out you know, all this stuff on my own. And uh, it was about the JavaScript console. I was excited. I edited it for him, and I got it ready to publish. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so at Oof, we, for the backgrounds of our blog posts, we have a really big, like, image-heavy site. So we just go on Flickr Creative Common and find something we can use legally that fits the bill. So I think I Googled, like, I think I searched for, like, uh, like computer programming or something really generic. It would just be like, oh, here's some, you know. And this is what came, and this is what I was really happy with. There we go. <laughs> That's the reaction I was looking for. So, what's? Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? It's not JavaScript. It's not JavaScript. It's C or C++. It's a debate in the office still. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not JavaScript, and that was something that like I have no idea. I don't know what you know, and like even looking at that, I I just have no idea. So yeah. Um, I think the only thing that saved me and the developer who wrote it and our company in general from looking really idiotic was me sitting in the middle of this open office space with all these brilliant guys who were like very, uh, very outraged <laughs> by, by this <laughs> image. And that's, I think actually when, I, I know, I remember when it happened, um, I literally was like, who cares? And they were like, we care. <laughs> they were very, you know, very upset. So. That's the kind of thing that, like, I feel like if you're not immersed in the culture of the people that you're trying to sell to, you, how are you gonna, um, how are you gonna get a hold of them, and how are you gonna find out what they care about? Um, and you know, even if you don't have to, know, like, I don't have to know programming languages at all for for my job to do my job, but you get a lot of uh, knowledge by osmosis, which is really helpful. But if you're coming at this from a developer perspective. Um, you know, sit with your fellow developers. So, go to events, go to meetups. Uh, you're at WordCamp. Good job. <laughs> um, learn what's popular. One of the one of the things that really stood out to me was um, one of our guys a while ago. I think it was at a I think it was at a meetup, local meetup that he learned about um, a few months ago. Well, a while ago when uh, Gulp.js had just come out, and he was introduced to it there and was hearing all these people talk about it, so he came to me and was like, oh, we should do a blog post about this, like this could get us some good, you know, traffic, and I was like, okay. So he wrote it, I edited it, we put it up, and um, 
I think when it was done, he actually put it up on Reddit, and it got we got like 5,000 hits for that one post, which for us is about a month worth of traffic. So it was, you know, it's never underestimate the power of just like getting that, once again, getting that knowledge and knowing what's popular. Um, also, it's a way to pretty semi-painlessly semi make industry contacts. So, you know, it's, it's just a more organic setting for networking as opposed to going to a networking event, which is awful. All right, so some things today. Um, oh, I did want to say real quick about the the sitting with your fellow developers thing. As a developer, um, I, I think one of the big draws of that is that the people that are decision makers for your services, so the people that you're trying to buy from or sell to, or I mean, sorry, the people you're trying to sell to, are um, you know going to be impressed by you knowing a lot of what's going on in the industry. So if you're a person that clearly gets the trends, that sometimes that's all that they have to go off of. You know, they don't really know the difference between Ruby and whatever. They don't care if you know five languages if they need that one. So if you have something like this where you know you're clearly in the know and you're um, you have connections and that kind of thing, then they're going to be more likely to uh, look favorably on you. So some things today. Um, that I would just start with on this point is you're at WordCamp, so really take advantage of the things that you're hearing, um, you know, the, the sessions that you go to in terms of like what's popular, what are people talking about. Um, definitely make some industry contacts. <laughs> the after party, like I said, open bar, so <laughs> really good, uh, really good time for that. And if you're not already really involved in Meetup on meetup.com, definitely go to that. I know there are there are also some um, local like kind of project groups that are blossoming. Um, so those are def and so don't feel like I guess my point with that is don't feel like you can't go on Meetup or you can't go to Meetups where developers may be because you're a creative person or a marketing person because more often than not those people really need um, they're really happy to trade for services like writing or design or even branding that kind of thing. Um, so definitely look for, you know, don't go to like a really specific language meetup maybe, but look for a WordPress user meetup or look for a, um, you know, whatever, Boston Tech meetup, something like that. If you're coming at this from the creative perspective and you live in an, or you work in an office, move your desk, sit with the people that you're marketing, you know, whose services you're marketing. Um, and then definitely take all of that information that you get and post a blog post to Reddit, I recommend. Um, if you're, you know, involved in Reddit, don't just, it's a scary place to just go. <laughs> um, but, you know, talk on your team, find someone who has a, a presence there and kind of knows the, the way of lay the land and then go. So, number two is to just remember the everyman. Meaning, remember the people and content market to the people that do not know specific things that you're trying to, you know, really specific technical topics. I think when you're trying to show that you're a really savvy WordPress developer who has expert knowledge and, you know, blah, 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 it's easy to get bogged down in that content that's really, like, highbrow. And definitely keep that up. I mean, you want to you wanna show that you're knowledgeable, but at the same time, the things that get the most traffic are the things that are really basic. So... I think we've all seen this quote from Albert Einstein, but like seriously, um, you should be able to, to explain what you do very simply. And um, if you have a, a topic that you want to write about, you should be able to make a highbrow version and a very simple version for people that don't know what they're doing. Also keep in mind, and I mean this isn't across the board, but a lot of times people that are the decision makers, the CMOs, the CEOs, whatever, if they're hiring you, they probably don't know what they're doing. So if you can appeal to them in a way that they feel like they can understand it, um, and they understand what you do, and it's not just like a bunch of jargon and you're going to trick them or something, then they're way more likely to um, go for you and get on your site. So meaning, these are a couple blog posts from the um site. So like, script underscore debug in WordPress. Great post. Who's going to read it? Developers. 10 ways WordPress is the best CMS. 
good post, who's going to read it? A lot of people. Um, WordPress users, bloggers in general, people with big companies that are on Drupal that are thinking about switching. So this is like getting them earlier on, not assuming that they know this like really intense stuff. And I mean that, like the first one would be good if they had an in-house technical team. So if you're looking at like a big client, that's a good way to get them. Or if, you know, anybody with a CTO probably. But you can demonstrate knowledge to, that'll appeal to a, a wider array of people here. So um, if you're a marketer, it's probably pretty easy to think of ways to <laughs> dumb this stuff down because you like that's how you take it in anyway. At least I'm, I'm assuming that you're like me. That's probably not a good thing to do. But I know about like, like more about the My Little Pony franchise. I feel like than I do about web development sometimes. So um, if you're a developer, one easy way to do that is to get visual. So take any content you have and make it visual. Here's why. These are some amazing statistics from accredited, you know, 3M. Oh, I'm sorry, that last one got caught up. That is a, uh, I can't remember who that is. I think it's like some kind of like Gallup thing, some big thing. Um, so, I mean, this is crazy. Like visual information is processed 60,000 times faster in the brain. It's just like immediately taken in. And viewers are way more likely to purchase, to engage with a post, to engage with a page if it's got some visual content on it. I mean, another just practical benefit is social media-wise, people are more likely to share visual content. It's sexier. It's easier to just be like, share this infographic. You get like you can get the gist of it just by looking at it. You don't have to read a big article. Um, also, if your pages have um, visual content on them then even your social media pages, then they're more likely to be picked up by search engines because of the variety of content on there. So it's gonna boost your SEO too. So here are some, I mean, just simple ways to do this. Create a video case study of your client telling what you did for them and how great it was. Put some numbers in there about like their engagement increasing or their traffic increasing or their sales increasing. Um, hold a photo contest on social media if you're, probably not if you're a freelancer, if you're a bigger, part of a bigger company, um, you know, create your own hashtag and get people to use your product and show on Instagram, on Facebook, make an infographic, I'm a really big proponent of infographics, <laughs> they're very, uh, that's a great way to explain really complicated concepts. Um, so some things to do today are just think about ways that you can, um, start going visual. So are you big enough that something like Instagram or Pinterest or YouTube, not even YouTube, YouTube you could put case study videos, but Snapchat, that's a thing. Um, are you big enough that those would work for you? Or do you have a physical product that you could show off on Instagram as opposed to just yourself on a laptop? <laughs> um, you know, find ways to incorporate images. That's really the base level there is you should be in your social media and your blog posts and any kind of content you should put out, they should be image heavy. You should, every single post you put out should have an image in it. Not necessarily on Twitter, but Facebook, blog, web page, um, definitely. And kind of going back to finding people, like meeting people at meetup groups, find a trade for services partner. You know, do you have a friend that is really good at video editing that would, you know, be willing to, you make a website for him or her and then he or she gives you video editing services for your project. Um, and think about ways that you can reach a lot of people with this knowledge. Are there other visual mediums that you can kind of use, you know, like um, something, or something kind of incorporating visual things into it, like a Twitter chat or a podcast or, um, you know, whatever. All right, so next is know yourself, meaning what makes you different than every other one of your competitors? What makes you special? Are you the smartest? Are you the most educated? Are you the most organized? Are you the most experienced? Are you the cheapest? You can't say you're the best, but <laughs> that doesn't count. Everyone, and it, like if you think about this, even big companies do this where they say, they basically say we're the best. They're like, oh, we're the most, um, we have the best team, 
we have the best developers, we make the we have these big clients, we do the greatest things. Get really specific with yourself and think about what is your number one selling point. Um, so uh, if you haven't started doing this yet, and I know this kind of seems like overkill if you're just like a one-man shop, but seriously, it's, this is really what takes the cake and like sets you on that next level. Think about who, what, why. Um, and or you're, if you're an individual, it may be easier to think about your past, present, future. That's kind of more of like a, your personal story. Um, so in both of these scenarios, though, definitely be 100% honest. <laughs> it's very easy to be like, oh, well, I'm a, you know, expert, blah, 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 and I do, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at the level of like this competitor of mine, and you might not be. And the, the bottom line is, like, if you are, at the end of the day, when you have this statement, you're going to be going back and checking every single thing that you do against it, marketing-wise. So if you say you're innovative, which everyone does, how are you going to show on your site, on your business cards, on your, um, even your social media posts, the language you use, how are you going to show that you're innovative? How, through your content, are you going to just, like, demonstrate this to people? So if you're not being truthful, it's really hard to keep up that lie of like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm innovative and uh, I did this and, or, you know, kind of have to backtrack. So definitely think about where your, um, where, where the truth is for you. And that's why as an individual, maybe if you want to say, if you want to incorporate where you want to be, it gives you that ambition, that look of ambition and like you have a plan, um, but you're still being truthful to the people you're trying to market to. So let's say that you've done this work and you have this already and you have a, a basic statement that, it, that says uh, to whoever you're trying to market, I'm a web developer that does open source web development because I love helping people communicate, you know, whatever it is. Okay, great. How does your client know that? So how... If someone has never seen your brand or you or your company before, how are they going to feel that? How is that going to come through to them? Branding. <laughs> and I know that's like, whenever I say personal brand, I kind of like, <laughs> but really, <laughs> branding is useful. And by branding, I just mean, take that statement you just, you just wrote. Take those words that you just wrote and those three terms, the who, what, why, the past, present, future and incorporate them into literally everything that has to do with your business. So if you're, going back to being innovative, because it's easy, um, you know, are you using a font that you don't see everywhere? Are you using colors that, you know, you don't, like maybe a different color scheme or a very simple, something that's very like next level? Is your logo really cool? Are your business cards different? Maybe it's not even a traditional business card. Maybe it's like, the other day I saw this, um, it's a recycling company and their business cards are like recycled scraps of things. So it's like they take a stamp and like stamp a piece of cardboard. Something like that is like, that's innovative, that's cool. Um, you know, stationery, PowerPoints, logos, website, how you talk about yourself uh, when you're at a conference and you give people an elevator pitch, how you write about yourself on your website, every single thing you do. And that's why it's so important to be truthful because <laughs> if you're not, eventually you're gonna slip in one of these areas and then you're going to look like, um, I don't know, someone that's not truthful. Like sometimes, I'm trying to think of an untruthful brand. Honestly, half the time when I see the Microsoft ads now, for like the Surface, I feel like that's very weird. Like they just took a 180 and now they're dancing around and snapping things together and I don't know. It doesn't really seem truthful, but. All right, so today, things you can work on. Start to ask those questions. Um, make sure that you're telling the truth when you ask those questions. Ask your friends, ask your coworkers. Think about what channels you have available to start making those questions known. So start incorporating your brand. So if you are a freelance developer, maybe you don't want to use like social media. If you have it already, that's cool. But um, you know, is, is that really going to be the best use of your time to, like, have a Facebook page just for you that has, like, 10 likes? Maybe it would be better to go to, to an event 
and like WordCamp and talk to people, whatever. Um, and then start incorporating that story that you wrote into your website. So once again, just every single thing that you do, check uh, back against your brand. Think about, okay, does this word come out in this area of my website? Does this phrase come out in the way that I give PowerPoints to new business? Stuff like that. All right, so number four, rely on ROI, meaning return on investment. So the marketers in the room, I'm sure, know this phrase because it gets drilled into your head by any superior you've ever had. <laughs> what is the return on the investment? What is the ROI of this Facebook post? What is the actual monetary value of this time that you're spending? Is it worth it? So if you're just on your own, like this is a really easy way, not easy necessarily, it's a really good way to kind of be able to take a step back and say, okay, I really like Google Plus. This is a popular one. I really like Google Plus. I feel like it's the next big thing. If I track my hours that I spend on Google Plus over a week, I spend 10 hours. Have I ever gotten a new customer from Google Plus? Have I ever gotten any kind of sale from Google Plus? You should be. So um, it's, it's a way to kind of put everything in perspective. Make sure that if you have any really strong alliances, you know when to cut the cord because you have the data. It's not just you know how you feel. So there are a lot of ways to measure ROI. Um, this is like something that plagued marketing people for a long time and now there are tools that do it. Obviously the specialized tools, that would be like a HubSpot, Infusionsoft, um, Salesforce, Marketo. Those are great, but they are expensive. Um, so if you are a larger company, that's probably worth it. If you have, especially if you have a lot of contacts, like if you have a sales team, you can organize, you know, that's probably worth it for you. If you're a one-man shop, I don't, or even a you know, small, small company, I don't think that that would really be a good investment. Google Analytics, I mean, that's a very basic way to measure the return on all of the things you're doing. Um, not social yet, but, well, you, you can see, you know, if you get referral from social media. But that's pretty complicated, and it changes all the time. And so even if you learn it in and out, uh, in probably in about a year, it will be completely different and you'll have to deal with that. So unless you have a friend that's like a Google Analytics expert, I don't know if I would do that. Social media tracking tools are great. So that would be something like um, Hootsuite or we just got one at Oomph called CoSchedule that I really like. It's got like a calendar view, it shows everything. Um, those are usually free. You can pay for them and they're a little bit better. Um, but of course they are limited to social media. So if you want to track the ROI of just social media, that's great. Um, but you're not going to get kind of the full effect, so you have to supplement that with other things. And then the, the other thing is just like promotion codes. So if you meet somebody at uh, WordCamp that later turns out to be a sale, if you put a special um, you know, URL extension on your business cards for a certain event, or if you have um, you know, a Facebook post that is like, use this promo code and I'll give you 5% off my services or something, then you can easily track where those new people came from. Um, obviously, though, that's not 100% thorough because you can't put a promo code on everything and every effort you do. So I would definitely recommend just mixing these up a little bit and um, just trying to be as thorough as possible. So another way to think about ROI and how and kind of to make sure that you're getting everything is to think about your sales in terms of a funnel. So some of you probably heard about this. This is just it's meaning that the top of the funnel is getting everybody in as fast as possible. So that's things that are very outreachy, like blog posts, meeting people at events, um, special offers, social media, things that people can see even if they're not immediately connected to you. And then the middle are, you know, your people that you already have, so your clients that you're working on that you are going to want to come back. What things can you do to help them out? Can you offer them free resources? Um, can you keep them in the loop with like an email newsletter? And then at the bottom, you've got people that are finished with projects that you want to bring back. So, um, you know, what, once again, what kind of things can you do for them? For every marketing effort, that you have, I think you definitely need to go back and say, okay, 
what funnel cycle is this for? Who am I going to help get to the next funnel cycle? Because that's the idea you're trying to push people through. How am I going to, you know, who am I going to push through with this? And you also have to think about your specific business because, I mean, some people, if you're doing like really short projects, it's all about traffic, right? You want to get as many people in as possible really quickly in and out, and then hopefully they come back if your services are good. If you are a bigger agency and you're talking about like, you know, big projects that take months and months, that's more about repeat business. You don't really care as much about the outreach stuff. You're talking about the, the special offers, the getting people to come back, the loyalty programs almost. So this is a really good um, visual from Kuno Creative and it just kind of shows what I'm talking about here. And it's got some specific examples of things you can do. All right, so today, things you can do. Think about your usual funnel. How long is your sales cycle? How long does it take for you to push projects out? How many clients do you have at a time? What would be the ideal? Maybe you're not doing as many as you want. Maybe you want to get more people in at the beginning so that you can start doing a faster cycle. For each stage, come up with three marketing efforts. And that's stuff that you can search for if you want to look at like some of the HubSpot resources or um, anything inbound marketing is probably going to help. So come up with three specific things for each stage. So in the beginning, what are you going to try to get people in with? Blog posts, social media, heavy stuff, you know. Um, think about which way to measure ROI is working, would work best for you if you're not doing anything already. Um, and start implementing those tools. There are plugins for almost all of those um, ROI tools too. So if you, I'm assuming, have a WordPress site, you can integrate that all back. So it's like all nice and shiny. Um, and then analyze your current efforts in terms of leads, I think is really helpful. So when you're talking about ROI, the return on investment, I mean, the return, you're either going to measure that in physical dollars, which is pretty hard, or in terms of people. So, um, you know, which, which platform, which marketing effort got you new people to talk to? Because at that point, it's up, it's up to you to, like, sell them and, and get them through. But if they came to you, there was a reason. So... Uh, I would consider that uh, a conversion, but think about that for yourself. Is that, and at the same, on the same note, um, you know, thinking in terms of Google Analytics, everybody has a conversion that Google Analytics can measure, but for you, is that a web form that they fill out? Is that that they physically call you? Is that that they just go on, um, I was talking to somebody this week from Green Banana, it's like an SEO firm, an expert, whatever that means. Um, and he was like, you know, if he said he worked with a lot of car dealerships for some reason, and they all thought that a conversion was just going to their web page, which seemed a little liberal. But it's different for everybody. All right, so the last point, the last secret, is good marketing is just about people. It's talking to people in a way that makes them want to listen and makes them want to talk back. So just be a person. <laughs> Don't think of it as like this big crazy uh, sales initiative and uh, business thing and whatever. Sometimes it's easy to get really buried in the ROI and the strategy and the metrics and the Google Analytics stuff coming at you. But I think at the end of the day you have to analyze your efforts and what's working in terms of is it something that would reach you. You know, so if you are if you go on Facebook and you completely ignore the Facebook ads and you would never dream of clicking on one yet you're spending money on Facebook ads for your business. That doesn't really make sense. So you have to think about what works for you um, and what one wants to make you listen. Also, for the marketing people in here, I think, um, you know, this is something you probably already know, I hope, but if you're working in tech, it's a little harder because, um, you know, you're coming from, you're, you're marketing this service that's very cold and very, somewhat impersonal, um, you know, it's a technology, it's not a, it's not a communication thing, it's not a, um, you know, it's not something that easily relates to all people. So I think it's really important to find that human element in the technology, and maybe that's the people that work for you, if you're at a company, the people that are doing the work and what they're like, maybe that's the people that your work impacts, so, you know, if you're building a website for someone that makes uh, like bionic limbs, 
that's really cool. That's helping a lot of people. That's something that connects with people, like on a deeper level. One thing is, this is kind of illustrated by the Golden Circle, which there's a really great TED Talk on this uh, from Simon Sinek. And his, his idea is that people don't buy what you do or how you do it, they buy why you do it. So he illustrates this, and I think this is the, a very easy example with Apple and Microsoft. So um, back in the day when Microsoft, or when Apple started marketing to people with this, like everybody knows that ad, right? They were the underdog. They were the change. They were breaking the status quo. Even today, like last night I Googled them, they're revolutionary, <laughs> right? And if you, it's funny now, because Microsoft is like caught up, and if you Google it, Microsoft's thing right there is literally like, we love empowering people to find solutions, and it's just totally like, uh, the epitome of this. But yeah, so the, the point is that Apple appealed to people not from, okay, well we make really great computers and you should buy one. They appeal to them from, we are changing the status quo, we're something different, we're the anti-PC, um, you know, we're for people that want, that are about the promise of the future and the promise of technology. And that's why we don't even, like, Apple is an everything brand now, it's a lifestyle brand. We don't think of them as just they make computers. Um, so, in layman's terms, oh, I like this graphic. The market for something to believe in is infinite. It's true. People like a why. In layman's terms, this is American. Oh man, I had an image of like a guy uh, auditioning for American Idol in a slave Leia costume. I was really excited about it because <laughs> he was like. It was very disturbing. Um, so American Idol Syndrome, meaning that talent is not enough. So if you, this goes back to the, the branding stuff that we were talking about. If you're like, I'm the best, great. There are a lot of people on American Idol that I think are the best that never win or never even get to the final because they don't have a good story. Like you have to have a serious, you know, I had a struggle and I overcame it and this is why I deserve to win. You have to have like something else to really tug at people. Otherwise they're not gonna, I mean, you'll, you'll do business, but you're not going to be above. And that's really, I know, like, once again, I think I can understand if you're a person on your own, this might seem a little like, really? I need, like, a statement of purpose and, you know, that kind of thing. But seriously, this is the kind of stuff that gets you to that next level. Because people would rather buy from someone who is like, I love empowering people to communicate with their clients better. Or I love helping people navigate the world of technology versus I love WordPress development. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's special. <laughs> I don't think you won. <laughs> I highly doubt he got into competition. <laughs> um, so another thing to remember about being a people in marketing is just to keep your marketing authentic. Um, so this is going back to that idea that Think about what you like. You know, if you go on a website and they have one of those ebook download things where it's like a gate form and you have to fill it out to get the ebook, that really annoys me. If that doesn't annoy you, then maybe you're on the right track and you should do that on your website. Um, but it's just kind of common sense to, you know, you have to think about what you like and start from there because market research is expensive. And at the end of the day, good marketing is about people. So don't annoy people. Marketing doesn't have to be annoying if you come at it from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to help as many people as possible. I'm going to help people get answers. I'm going to get people to come to me because I'm going to offer all this knowledge for free. And then they'll see that I'm the expert and I know what I'm doing and I'm a nice person. Then that's going to go a lot better for you than the traditional cold calling flyers talking at people all the time. Um, because like I said, people are annoyed. We're not, at, you know, we're not, it's not 20 years ago. We're not in the time when that stuff works and people are even getting annoyed with social media posts and stuff now so you've got to at least be on that level before we find the new frontier or whatever that is. So today, things to do, take a step back and just think about what works for you. Think about your current efforts and if you were just an ordinary person, you know, moving forward, what would you do? If you're not someone that likes business pages on Facebook, because you just think it's stupid and you don't care about their updates, probably don't have a Facebook page, etc. 
Also think about common questions um, that people ask you, or even something that you were confused about before you, you know, found the answer through whatever resource, and turn that into an answer for somebody else. So kind of like pass it forward. And then think about content downloads, think about your blogging platform, think about hosting a Twitter chat or some easy way. What channels do you have to make yourself a resource for others? All right, so to summarize, sit with the developers, even if you're a developer. Remember the everyman, so appeal to as many people as possible, that's how you went on the internet. Know yourself, be true to yourself, don't overestimate yourself, uh, your branding at least. Rely on ROI, always go back to that metric of, okay, is this really gonna work for me? And marketing equals people, so be a people. Be authentic and relatable and don't push sales on people and talk at people. So at the end of the day, marketing is just like any other relationship. It's listening and it's talking. It's a give and take. It's not, it shouldn't be just pushing information at people. It should be offering it, and if they want to take it, they will, and then go from there. Um, so hopefully the, the, fi the five <laughs> secrets, five secrets um, of marketing were some principles you can take moving forward, and hopefully some of the tips were helpful. Um, like I said, I'm definitely available to talk more during questions and then at the happiness bar and at the oomph booth. And at the after party, I might not remember it tomorrow, but uh, at the after party. And um, yeah, just definitely any marketing effort that leaves you with a good conscience and feeling genuinely like you helped somebody and you feel good about it is what you should go forward with. So, thank you. All right, so questions. questions on the microphone. Um, so the question was just what time period should you try a marketing effort before you cut the cord if you're working with clients? Um, I would say it depends partly on the metric that you're following because if you're using Google Analytics, a lot of things won't start tracking for a couple months. Um, but in general, I would say six months is probably a good rule of thumb. Long enough that you can um, you know, see what's working and assuming you've made a like full out effort to get people to come to you via that platform, you know, you've really been working on whatever your Facebook page or your Google Plus page, then I would say six months is probably good a good time to get established. Anybody else? Yes. It's a comment and that is um one thing I've seen the really cool companies doing is they have a sort of get socially responsible page. So they're giving back page, which is not just giving back to the community like WordPress community, uh, which is cool. So all the things that the, all the things you built to affect the community, but also giving back to your local whatever your company decides that their social focus is, and then using that content also uh, for your Twitter or your content. Yeah. So the comment was just that um, uh, some companies are doing something really cool, which is just showing their um, their social responsibility either on their website or in their marketing and I definitely agree that's one of the ways to find that like human element because you're showing you know the people you work with really giving back and impacting people in a positive way um, and yeah even as a, a small like a freelancer or a small shop that's easy to do with, uh, contributing to WordPress or whichever platform you like yes oh hi um, could you put the, in, the sales funnel infographic back for a minute I, I didn't, I and when we got halfway through, I was like... Oh, yeah. Definitely, if you search for... Um, <coughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> if you search for, like, Kuno Creative Sales Funnel, that'll come up, too. It's really, really useful. It's an infographic. Yes. And, you know, I find that if I'm a marketer or a developer, and I go to those events, mm -hmm. those people are 
either my competitors or collaborators. Okay. So I try to go to as many different venues as possible to find looking for customers. Right. I okay, yeah, so the so the question was um, just going to meetups and stuff like that, you are usually with your competitors or your um, collaborators. And I definitely, that, yeah, that's definitely true. And that's definitely not something you should do to find sales because those are people that, I, I, well, I mean, it depends on your level though. At times, you know, there are people that are going to pass it back to you and say, oh, this client was too big for me. Can you take it? Or something like that. They don't have time. So it's good to make those contacts either way, but I agree. Anybody? Yes. Do you have any suggestions on how to market to marketers? Sorry, say that again. How to market to marketers? Suggestions on how to market to marketers. Um, I mean, that's kind of the cobbler's shoe, right? <laughs> so you have to think about, like, what are they used to seeing? What tricks do they use? And then be more innovative. That's really hard because, um, are you, well, are you thinking about marketing tech services to marketing agencies? Okay. Kind of thing? So I work in IT, okay. but the, um, this we support uh, a marketing company, a digital marketing company. So. Okay, gotcha. So you're doing like development for them? Um, it's more assistance support. Or support. Oh, support. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I got to wrap it up. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's see quickly. Um, definitely think about their skill level. So digital marketing is not the same as IT savvy, case in point. So um, if you, you know, what are some of the problems that they experience? Talk to, just talk to people that you've worked with before and think about what were the questions they had coming in to the project. What are some of the common things that you get on your website, like common questions that you get through email or when they talk to a rep or whatever, and make content that gives them those answers so that you're immediately like the god of answers. That's hard. Okay, we gotta wrap up. Thank you. Thank you.